everybody, and welcome back to another installment of our series of companion guides to each chapter of Eye of the World, the first book in the Wheel of Time series. Now, this is a series for those of you reading the books for the very first time, but we will also have spoiler content at the end of the video for those of you that are rereading the books and want to go a little bit more in depth with the material. Make sure to check out the previous videos in the series. All of those videos are going to have an accompanying written guide with access to all of the maps and visuals on thegreatblight.com. Today, we're going to be tackling chapter eight of Eye of the World titled A Place of Safety. Now, all of the videos in this series are broken down into two sections the first section being a basic recap of the chapter. There are going to be visuals and additional maps that'll help you basically just understand what you just read. Sometimes it's helpful to have some visuals to accompany your read. This section is safe for first time readers and will not spoil anything past this particular chapter in the books. It is designed with first time readers in mind. The second section of the video will be spoiler filled and will not only break down what happened in the chapter, but we'll also get into all the foreshadowing for the future in the books Easter eggs, general thoughts, questions, things like that. This section is designed for folks that are rereading the series. Now this entire video series is sponsored by audible.com. Audible is the world's largest provider of audiobooks and the Wheel of Time audiobooks are outstanding. It's my favorite way to reread the series. Audible is offering a free audiobook to all of my viewers. All you have to do is head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nablus get the free trial for the service. You can keep the book even if you don't keep the service and you really support the channel by doing so. Again, www.audibletrial.com forward slash Nablus or you can click the link in the description of the video. So let's go ahead and recap chapter eight of Eye of the World titled A Place of Safety. Now the chapter opens as Moraine arrives in the sick Tam Althor's room in the Winespring Inn along with Rand and Lan who are right behind her. When they arrive, Tom Marilyn, who's the Gleeman, and Bran Alvier, the innkeeper, are watching over Tam. Now, as soon as they arrive, Tom storms out of the room, and Lan mentions that he does not trust the Gleeman. Moraine tells everybody to leave, but she allows Rand to stay after he asks if he can stay and watch. She goes and sits at Tam's side while Rand and Lan stand against the back wall of the room. While Moraine is working, Lan asks Rand about Tam's sword and mentions that it's an odd thing for a sheep herder to have possession of and mentions there must be quite a story behind it. Now, Rand asks Lan if he and Moraine had been told about a man in a black cloak that he and his friends had seen earlier, if that would have helped them and saved the village, something like that. Moraine tells Rand that she would have needed at least a half a dozen of her sisters to deal with all the shadow spawn that were in the two rivers last night and that the sight of the raven the day before should have tipped her off. Basically, she's saying to Rand that it's not his fault that all of this happened. Lan tells Rand that there are many different types of animals, mostly carrion eaters like ravens, crows, and rats that can be minions of the Dark One and they serve as spies. Rand then asks Moraine if she's finished healing Tam yet and she tells him that the Trolloc weapon left a taint in Tam and it will be extremely difficult to heal. But she tells Rand that she will not allow him to die. She takes out an Angriol shaped in the form of a robed woman. Now Rand acknowledges to himself in his head that Angriol are items that are used to amplify the one power and they help Aes Sedai do more than they could alone. While Moraine uses the Angriol to heal Tam, Lan explains that the rider in black that Rand saw was most likely a Murdral and explains to Rand that Murdral, also known as Fades and Halfmen, are dangerous opponents and they have powers that stem from the Dark One. He also tells Rand that they inspire fear in anyone that looks in their eyeless gaze. Lan expresses some surprise that a Trolloc actually spoke with Rand and then congratulates him for killing the Trolloc, even if it was accidental. Moraine announces that Tam is healed, but will require a great deal of rest to fully recover. Moraine then announces to Rand that he and the other boys will need to leave the village to protect the village. Lan and Moraine explain to Rand that only parts of the village were actually truly attacked by the Trollocs, and those were the places that Rand, Matt, and Perrin were all staying. All of the other attacks were simply diversions. She explains that the three of them were all born within weeks of one another, and that the Shadowspawn are looking for them, and that they will be back unless they leave for Tarvalin. Rand vows to stay with Tam until he wakes up, and Moraine and Lan leave to get the other boys. Marin Alvir brings in some food for Rand, and he vows to stay awake until his father wakes up. So that is the recap of chapter eight of Eye of the World. Now we're gonna jump into the spoiler section. The rest of the video is gonna carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through the final book in the series, A Memory of Light. If you have not finished the final book of the series, go do that and then come back and watch this. So let's kick this off with some foreshadowing. First, we have Lan asking about the Heron Mark sword that was Tam Althor's 
and that Rand was wearing at the time. Now, Leon mentions that there must be some story behind it, and we later find out that Tam Al Thor was a member of the Ilyanor Companions. It's an elite group of soldiers in the Ilyanor military, and he was given the sword by the King of Ilion for his service. The sword is not only Heron marked, denoting a blade master, but it's also power forged, meaning that it's never going to dull. While Moraine is first healing Tam, Rand shivers and rubs his arms, thinking to himself that Moraine is probably using the one power. Now, that's because she is, and this is actually the first time that he feels somebody using the power. Now, he isn't aware that he can feel it, but that's what's causing it, which is really cool, something you'll notice on a reread. When Moraine is explaining to Rand that he, Matt, and Perrin would need to leave, it is obvious that the Dark One is after the three boys, as all three are born within weeks of one another. Moraine fails to mention to Rand that this is because one of them is likely the Dragon Reborn. Moraine then talks about the fact that the Trollocs have not been seen in the Two Rivers for more than 2,000 years, foreshadowing the story of Menetherin that she will tell in the subsequent chapter. She also foreshadows the Battle of the Two Rivers when the Trollocs invade the Two Rivers with Slayer and the Shadow Rising. She's talking about the number of Aes Sedai's and Warders that it would take to beat back the total number of Trollocs that were in the Two Rivers the night before, and Rand pictures the towns of the Two Rivers in ashes and battle fighting Trollocs, which is something that comes to be in the Shadow Rising. I actually did a video on that with Unraveling the Pattern. If you want to watch that, I'll have it linked in the description. But there's a complete visual breakdown of the battle. So let's move on and hit some of the general thoughts and observations from the chapter. We'll start with Tom leaving the room as Moraine shows up at the beginning of the chapter. Now, this is really showing Tom just dislikes Aes Sedai. He remains respectful, but he has trouble being around them due to Owen's death, Owen being his nephew, um, after being gentled by the Red Aja. Now, what most people don't know is Owen was gentled on the spot by the Red Aja. He was not given a trial. This is something referred to as the vileness that happened some years before. The Red Aja actually got in a lot of trouble for it. That was some kind of a backstory that's going on. There was some tentative uh, whether Elida was involved in that or not. But nevertheless, uh, Owen was a victim of that. Now, during the chapter, Rand continues to overcompensate and tell himself loudly in his head that Tam is his father, something that he's going to continue to do even though he knows that this isn't true at this point. This is very indicative of Rand's personality. Basically, he just denies reality always until he's forced to face it. Another thing worth noting here is that the level of power scaling that Rand is going to go through over the course of the books. While talking to Moraine about the Trollocs, she mentions that she would need help from her sisters to kill close to a hundred or more Trollocs that were in the Two Rivers. Now, this compared to later in the story when Rand single-handedly kills close to a hundred thousand of them, he really is really powerful at the end of the books, like crazy powerful. Now, as Rand speaks to Lan about the merge roll, Rand says that the Dark One can't harm you if you deny him and that fades are 20 feet tall, which basically just shows the level of superstition that you would expect in a village that hasn't had any meaningful contact with the borderlands or with the outside world there's just a lot of misinformation they only get scraps and it's all hearsay and that's actually one of the things that robert jordan was going for with these books it's also worth noting here that lan finds it very strange that narg the trollic actually spoke to rand this is never really addressed again in the story but lan actually also finds it odd that a trollic talked so it's not simply something that robert jordan put in the story before he really had any idea of what he was doing or before he had put his world together. He did this on purpose and then never really explained it. Another thing worth noting here is that Moraine continually explains how much has been lost since the Age of Legends. She mentions the ability to heal, the making of Angriol, and it really kind of sets this very melancholy type of tone for the beginning of the story on just how far civilization has fallen. The last thing here on General Thoughts is that Tarvalin is mentioned as the place of safety which is the title of the chapter. Now, it is also the title of one of the season one episodes of the Amazon TV show of The Wheel of Time. Now, at the, at the recording of this video, the show has not been released, so we don't know, but that season one episode could be the very first time Tarvalin shows up in the TV show. Remains to be seen. So let's end here with a few unanswered questions from the chapter. Both of these things have plausible answers, but... They come across a whole lot like Robert Jordan was still fleshing out his world building, uh, and so he really didn't know yet. Uh, the first thing here is that Moraine says that she would need a dozen or so sisters to deal with the Fade and some Trollocs. Uh, now, it's really odd to me, given that she could take down quite a few Trollocs on her own. Uh, she might be exaggerating here to scare Rand to get him ready to leave, 
but she seems capable of organizing a defense and killing a lot of Trollocs if she was forced to. Way more Trollocs show up at the Battle of the Two Rivers than were here. Like, she talks about, like, a whole fist, like a hundred or so. I would think she could probably take him. Secondly, the weapon that injured Tam Thor was mentioned as being made at Thakandar. Now, this is the only time in the books, as far as I could find, that it is mentioned that a Trolloc had a weapon from Thakandar. All of the other times, it is a Murdral that wields them. So it was very odd that a Trolloc happened to have one at this time. It also would seem odd that every Trolloc in the army would have a um, Thakandar, you know, weapon given that we know that it takes a soul to make one. So I would doubt that. So it just seems odd that, again, that a Trolloc happened to have one. So anyways, what did you guys think of A Place of Safety? Is there any foreshadowing or points that I missed? Please let me know in the comments of the video and make sure to stay tuned for the other videos in this series. We'll be going through all of the chapters of Eye of the World. And depending on when you watch this, there may be tons of editions of this series out after this video. So make sure to binge the entire playlist. Also, Make sure to head to www.audibletrial.com forward slash nameless and get your free audiobook. Thank you all for watching and until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a rope of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free, crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?